Good afternoon, people. Welcome back to another video. Seeing that I have been sick and that I have been lingering for such a long period of time, I thought it might be appropriate time to do another health uh, video regarding my health issues that I struggle with. And today's video will be on the Epstein Barr virus and popping up, which is now actually going to be a considerable part of this video with the Coxsackie B virus. Um, I only actually saw that I was infected with Coxsackie B virus going through my medical records to do the Epstein Barr virus and the relation that it has with chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgia encephalitis, ME slash CFS. Um, so that's going to be the discussion today. I am sitting in front of my window because I am going to do reading. It is medically based and I not a doctor or a nurse or in the health profession so it's difficult for me to remember everything so i'm going to do a lot of reading that i did research and try to make it as um <coughs> as simple as possible <laughs> and um <coughs> pardon me and um but i i'm going to do a lot of reading then i'm going to wear my my spectacles my glasses and then i can't I'm sitting in front of the ring light because it reflects badly in the specs and then it's not pleasant to, to look at. <clears throat> um, <coughs> why I have decided to do this is because three things happens to me because I've got a compromised immune system is that I get infected very, very quickly. So just being in the presence of somebody that's sick, I normally say I just have to look at somebody that's sick and I will get it. Um, <laughs> if I want to take that analogy a bit further, I can actually get infected over the phone. <laughs> um, <coughs> I get it in a much more severe degree than a normal person will and i do struggle so much longer <coughs> to get rid of it i had an idea that this might have been um the new um coronavirus uh, strain <coughs> pardon me because um it has really um taken its toll on me and um really um has been lingering for a considerable amount of time um three things that normally happens to me that didn't happen this time was it didn't go into my stomach which was a relief because that normally gets the vasovagal um response going which i can't handle it did not uh, go into my ears and it did not affect my muscles so much. Although I do now have extrusion tube problems in both my ears if I blow my nose. And also I can feel that I cannot sustain a specific muscle position for too long. Um, I have been noticing that I do have a little bit of shakes when I try to do delicate work, for instance, <laughs> like putting toothpaste onto my toothbrush, then I do have the shakes. I'm so scared of Parkinson's, but I do think it might be because of nerve damage um, that that is a problem for me. So I'm going to start with the Coxsackie B virus and um, the symptoms of Coxsackie B virus before I go on to the Epstein-Barr virus. I just want to say that for 
neither the Coxsackie or the Epstein Barr virus or the old yuppie flu, which is now MECFS, myalgia and spicolitis chronic fatigue syndrome, there is a definite blood test that they can do. What they do is they test for antibodies to see if there was a recent infection. Um, I've got three blood tests here. The first one was uh, done in 1994, where I tested positive for two of the Epstein Barr virus antibodies. And I tested positive for Coxsackie B4, where the marker was 320. Then the next test was done in 1997, where I then had high <clears throat> markers for Coxsackie B3 and Coxsackie B4 again, 20 and 80 respectively. Okay, then um, this one was done in... Um, 2005, where I tested positive for three of the Epstein Barr virus markers, and it showed that there was a reactivation of Epstein Barr infection. Um, <clears throat> so, after all that, um, I did stop having blood tests done when um, I start to feel sick because um, I think it was a proven an indication that um, I get re uh, reinfected by both the Coxsackie before and the Epstein-Barr virus from time to time, um, which is... Um, presents itself with a sore throat, fever, sore muscles, body ache, um, very tired, and um, but it will feel like flu, which is not um, becoming a proper total flu uh, for me. It's just sort of like underlining like a be the beginning of flu, which is just sitting there and just doesn't want to go away. <clears throat> okay, uh, the Coxsackie virus, um, it was strange. I, um, yeah, that's just strange. There are two Coxsackie virus stereotypes that cause most of the clinically recognized syndromes, usually in infants and kids. It is not as common in adults. <sighs> Types A and B are the most common. <sighs> Type A viruses cause herpangina, which is sores in the throat and hand, foot and mouth disease common among children. Children will get painful blisters in their mouth and small tender lesions on the palms of their hands and bottom of their feet. It goes away on its own but can cause complications if the child can't drink or eat because of pain. The group A virus also cause herpangina, blisters on the tonsils, and soft palate, which presents as a sore throat. The group B virus causes infrequent summer outbreaks of fever and spasms of the abdominal and chest muscles. Subtypes of group A and B can cause more severe symptoms, including meningitis, which is inflammation of the spinal cord and the brain. What is the difference between a Coxsackie A and a Coxsackie B virus? Our results indicate that Coxsackie A viruses are able to affect both skeletal and heart muscle, while the Coxsackie virus B subgroup infects a wide range of tissues. In addition to striated muscles, these include central nervous systems, liver, exocrine, pancreas, and brown fat. At best, I'm not good with pronunciation. I did go and Google pronunciation of all these words, but I will probably still botch them up badly. 
typically in Sunni fashion. How do you get Coxsackie B? Coxsackie viruses are very contagious. They can pass from person to person on unwashed hands and contaminated surfaces. They also can spread through droplets of fluid sprayed into the air when an infected person sneezes or coughs. Some of my notes are also going to overlap um, because I did go on to different sites when I did my research. So if the same information is here um, two or three times, then please forgive me. What does Kaksaki B cause? Group B Kaksaki viruses tend to infect the heart, pleura, pancreas, and liver, causing pleurodynia, myocarditis, pericarditis, and hepatitis. Hepatitis is the liver. Myocarditis and pericarditis has got both to do with the um, small um, membrane around the heart. <clears throat> both group A and group B Coxsackie viruses can cause non-specific febrile illnesses, rashes, upper respiratory tract disease, and aseptic meningitis. Does Coxsackie cause fatigue? Coxsackie group B virus is responsible or several syndromes, viral prodrome, including fever, fatigue, malaise, myalgia, gastrointestinal upset, such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Now, if you have been watching some of my videos, you would know that last year was a terrible year for me because I started to develop out of the blue, um, very debilitating um, symptoms of my stomach and intestinal um, and colon lining the whole year. And um, it was terrible. I actually had to go for a scope and a um, colonoscopy. And um, never thought of actually testing for the Kaksaki virus or the reinfection of Epstein Barr virus. Um, they just thought that it was irritable bowel syndrome. They cause symptoms ranging from gastrointestinal distress to aseptic meningitis, pericarditis, and myocarditis. Like other introviruses, Kaksaki B viruses have a tropism for muscle cells and have been linked to myalgic encephalomyelitis and chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, as well as type 1 diabetes. What virus is associated with chronic fatigue? In addition, about 1 in 10 people who become infected with Epstein-Barr virus, Ross River virus and Coxiella burnetti will develop a set of symptoms that meet the criteria for MECFS. People with these infections who had severe symptoms are more likely than those with mild symptoms to later develop MECFS symptoms. What is the root cause of chronic fatigue, Lyme disease, hidden gut infections, heavy metal poisoning, and adrenal fatigue. Mine, I'm 100% sure that it was adrenal fatigue because of the abusive household that I was brought up in with a narcissistic mother. And um, yes, um, you cannot put your system to those high levels of fight and flight alert all the time from early childhood toddler up to um, teenage young adult um, you become a non-functional to um, live under constant stress with huge amounts of adrenaline and cortisol being released in your body all the time, you are bound to have permanent damage um, to your um, physical self.
that's apart from your emotional and your psychological self and um, you just become a non-functional human being narcissistic parents bring up people who find it extremely difficult to function in society my psychological um, issues i will do a separate video on but i do i was diagnosed with social phobia um, and i was diagnosed with avoidant personality disorder <clears throat> uh, both if you take the chronic fatigue syndrome um, out of the picture both of those but also chronic fatigue syndrome is related to somebody who was subject to and exposed to constant extreme abuse so my root cause of my chronic fatigue was definitely the adrenal uh, fatigue which was definitely caused by a narcissistic mother in my case can you ever get rid of chronic fatigue there is no cure or approved treatment for myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome however some symptoms can be treated or managed um, treating these symptoms might provide relief for some patients with NECFS but not others um, my blood tests that indicates that I've got um, continuous intermittent reinfection, reactivation. If I experience the slightest little bit of stress in my life, then it will just represent itself. And um, the mind games that my mother stole playing with me knowing what she is doing to me um, as far as my mental health is concerned what she's putting me through knowing that i've got a heart condition knowing what stress is doing to me mentally and physiologically um so cruel very very cruel but she enjoys it okay on this article i'm just going to say that um, nearly half of all reported cases of Coxsackie B infections occur before the age of five. Symptoms of infection with viruses in the Coxsackie B grouping include fever, headache, sore throat, gastrointestinal distress, extreme fatigue, as well as chest and muscle pain. <clears throat> it can also lead to spasms in your arms and in your legs. In some cases, viruses in the Coxsackie B family progress to myocarditis and pericarditis, that is your heart, which can result in permanent heart damage or death. Coxsackie B virus infection may also induce aseptic meningitis. As a group, they are the most common cause of unexpected sudden death and may account for up to 50% of such cases. The pancreas is a frequent target which can cause pancreatitis. So as of 2008, there is no well-accepted treatment for Coxsackie B group of viruses. Palliative care is available, however, and patients with chest pain or stiffness of the neck should be examined for signs of cardiac or central nervous system involvement respectively. Enteroviruses are usually only capable of acute infections that are rapidly cleared by the adaptive immune response. However, mutations which enterovirus B serotypes, such as Coxsackie virus B and Echovirus, acquire in the host during the acute phase can transform these viruses into the non cytolytic form, also known as non cytopathic or defective enterovirus. This form is a mutated quasi-species 
of enterovirus, which is capable of causing persistent infection in human tissues. And such infections have been found in chronic myocarditis or dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay, <clears throat> that is the Coxsackie B virus. Now I will go on to the Epstein Barr virus or EBV. EBV is best known as the cause of infectious mononucleosis. Infected individuals develop a series of flu-like symptoms four to six weeks after coming into contact with the virus. Some people become infected but remain asymptomatic. While others require a few weeks to fully recover from their symptoms. Okay, what are the symptoms? Fatigue is the main one, one of the first symptoms. In some cases, the fatigue can linger for several months after the infection subsides. Second is fever. As the virus develops, individuals may develop a fever. This is one of the main symptoms of the Epstein-Barr virus and often appears together with other flu-like symptoms. A fever develops because the body is working to fight the virus and make itself an inhospitable host. As one's body temperature rises, he or she may experience other uncomfortable symptoms such as sweating, chills, in addition to the fatigue. <clears throat> Lack of appetite, inflamed throat, swollen lymph nodes in the neck, enlarged spleen, swollen liver, rash, headache, muscle aches, sensitivity to light, shortness of breath. A lot overlaps with the Coxsackie B. The Epstein-Barr virus, formerly called the human gamma herpes virus 4, is one of the nine known human herpes virus types in the herpes family and is one of the most common viruses in humans. EBV is a double-stranded DNA virus. Diagnosing EBV infection can be challenging because the symptoms are similar to other illnesses and the EBV infection can be confirmed with a blood test that detects antibodies. Once again, it is about antibodies that shows up to indicate that the infection was there and the, the immune system was trying to fight it off. <clears throat> After you get an EBV infection, the virus becomes latent or inactive in your body. In some cases, the virus may reactivate. This does not always cause symptoms, but people with weakened immune systems are more likely to develop symptoms if EBV reactivates. Um, transmission. EBV spreads easily. EBV is spread by saliva um, through kissing, sharing drinks and food, using the same cups, eating utensils or toothbrushes. I don't know who she uses toothbrushes. Um, having contact with toys that children have drooled on. Um, the virus probably survives on an object at least as long as the object remains moist. Um, <clears throat> um, also, it can also spread through other bodily fluids. Um, it can spread through blood, semen during sexual conduct, blood transfusions, organ transplants. Um, <clears throat> the first time you get infected with EBV, primary Epstein-Barr virus infection, you can spread the virus for weeks and even before you have symptoms. Prevention and treatment. There is no vaccine to protect against Epstein-Barr virus infection. You can help protect yourself by not kissing or sharing drinks, food or personal items like toothbrushes with people who have EBV infection. Does EBV cause cancer? Um, it causes 1% of all cancers. 
EBV increases the risk of some cancer types. Um, EBV is linked to Hodgkin lymphoma, Burkitt lymphoma, nasopharyngeal cancers, which is the area in the back of the nose, gastric carcinoma, in some cases, stomach cancer. <clears throat> EBV infection can affect a person's blood and bone marrow. The virus can cause the body to produce an excessive number of white blood cells called lymphocytes. EBV can also weaken the immune system, making it more difficult for the body to fight infection. What can Epstein-Barr virus cause later in life? More serious complications may include anemia, nerve damage, which is fibromyalgia, liver failure, and or interstitial pneumonia. Symptoms may be constant or come and go and tend to get worse over time. Chronic active Epstein-Barr virus infection occurs when the virus remains active and the symptoms of an EBV infection do not go away. It is a very rare complication of an Epstein-Barr virus infection. It is diagnosed based on the symptoms, clinical exam, blood tests that show EBV DNA remaining at high levels for at least three months. What causes Epstein-Barr virus to flare up? EBV never truly goes away. Even if the symptoms subside, the virus will remain inactive inside your body until it is reactivated by a trigger. Some of the most common triggers include stress, a weakened immune system, taking immunosuppressants, hormonal changes such as menopause. It's time for virus has long been connected to chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, it was very hurtful for me when I became sick as a very young person and everybody accused me of being, I'm um, sorry, I am still a little bit feverish, um, accused me of being lazy um, and that I don't want to work. Um, it is not nice if you have studied for something to become a self-sufficient, independent uh, person in society and then the rug gets pulled from under you by getting sick. And it seems like YouTube only thinks that if you are physically disabled in a wheelchair or you don't have legs or you don't have arms or you have cancer and you are going through chemotherapy um, that the, algor the algorithm will actually push that. It um, doesn't seem to give much weight to heart disease and heart problems. Um, although a heart attack can kill you unexpectedly at any point in time, no matter what your age. And also not to diseases and illnesses, which is not common, unless it is extremely rare. Um, but people don't really seem to recognize or want to recognize because you seem to be healthy you know i don't have um oozing sores or um it is not visible but it is there and it is disabling and you know when i have had my fights with my mother she would often scream at me why don't you go then and get yourself a job 
because I cannot maintain the pace when I do have a job of getting up in the morning, getting ready, go to work, keep to the routine and the time schedule that a job requires of a person, coming home, then do the, the house chores, go to sleep at 10, uh, get up at 5 in the morning and repeat that. I, I, I can't. My um, energy bottle doesn't fill up again. It just keeps on um, getting emptier and emptier until there is nothing left. And I'm not even talking about the fact that I am um, social phobic and avoidant. I mean, that is a terrible mix to throw any person into um, an environment where you must deal with people on a daily basis. I just think that people, my family, my close family, weren't interested enough that they actually ever gone to the trouble, the effort and the time to ask me or to find out about what was really going on with me, mentally and physically. Um, when I started the boarding process at a very early age, <clears throat> um, my school principal accused me from trying to be dishonest and to take advantage of the system. And he still said to me, I will never get it right to get boarded because I'm too young. And boarding is not easy. It's a difficult process. And I looked at him and I said to him, but I'm not trying to lie to anybody or fake anything or to be dishonest. This is what is going on with me. This is my reality. And he was completely and totally shocked when the blood results came back. And when at that point in time, I had to go to the state doctor. Um, and the report that the state doctor wrote, there was, there's no prognosis for me. I'm now talking in 1997. There wasn't any prognosis for me to um, recover from my psychological problems and my physical problems. And now I had a heart attack, uh, a severe heart attack. And now my stomach and my colon has packed up. Um, I'm in a worse state <laughs> than I was ever before. And um, yes, it, it's just very difficult. And I get sick all the time. And I don't, when I'm sick, I don't get better. And I'm trying to function. And I'm trying to put a smile on my face. And um, I'm trying. Um, and it's not easy. I, I don't have energy to do things. I, I look at other YouTube channels and how cute and wonderful and fantastic <clears throat> the people make their videos and um, it is an effort to get up in the morning. It's an effort to get dressed often. It's an effort to do my hair. It's an effort to put a little bit of makeup on. It's an effort to go to the shop. It's an effort to go um, into my kitchen. Um, everything is effort. Um, everything feels like it's taking like a major amount of energy from me. Um, I think that MECFS is a very overlooked illness and Unless you are struggling with it yourself or you are living with somebody um, with that problem or that you are interested enough to find out about 
how it presents itself in life and what the person must actually endure and go through that suffers from it. Um, I've lost my train of I've lost my train of thought. I went to fetch it too far. Um, it is just hard. I can attest to the fact of a life a lifetime struggle with this, and I've got the proof that um, it's not fakery. Um, that is my reality. That is my daily reality that I must struggle with. Um, I, I know that it, it shouldn't bother me what other people say and what what other people think of me, but it hurts if people think that you are just useless and lazy and um, you enjoy doing nothing and being at home and never have any money to buy anything and that you must always look into other people's eyes for little favors or um, little financial handouts or second hand me downs as far as clothes or furniture goes because you can't afford to buy it. Yet you did um, prepare yourself in your younger days to be able to, to do all those things that other, other people do. And um, yet you find yourself in a situation where you are not um, able and capable of. In any case, I hope that this is a little bit of help um, for other people that is struggling with um, the same issues that I am. And I hope um, to see you in another video. And please take care of yourself. Life is very short and very precious. Goodbye.